Hi, I'm Tiki Two Flower, and welcome to Cosplay Tips with Tiki. So you've decided that you want to add electronics into your cosplay. What are you going to need to do all of this? Today, I have Aaron from Wasteland Creations to tell us. Welcome back, Aaron. Well, thanks for having me, TK. So what do you have to show us today? So essentially on the table, I have a whole bunch of tools which are mainly what I use when doing my lighting and all the various cosplay work that I do at home, especially when it involves electronics. So one of the main things that I use the most is actually using my soldering iron. And I have two different soldering irons here. Since I'm an electrical engineer during my, in my real job, I tend to have something a little bit higher end, and this soldering iron, it's about $150 on Amazon, which is much more than most people are willing to just shell out just to be able to do electronics. I think I paid $9 for yeah. my soldering iron. So over here we have a, a little bit smaller one. It's a little bit uh, smaller, it's easier to use uh, in certain respects and cheaper. That's maybe $20 or so. You can get it on Amazon or go to Radio Shack, someplace like that, and be able to get a, a little soldering iron for the little projects you're going to do. But you definitely want some kind of decent soldering iron in, in like these here. And you know what you're going to use these for is like soldering wires onto the LEDs, making connections to like maybe battery wires, things of that nature. Which you know you do, you're going to do a lot because you have to make the LEDs and wire everything, and then you need some some power source. And maybe if you get real into it, you want to add a switch to turn it on and off, things of that nature. All right. What else have we got here? So then on this side of the table, we have just a lot of supplies that you use in conjunction with the soldering iron. So, for instance, I have this little vise which we use to just hold things. It can hold LEDs, you can hold the little boards maybe that you're going to be working with, uh, all kinds of things. But it's just nice to have something that's going to be able to grip it and be able to hold it in place while you're trying to solder wires or do something else to it. Uh, and that's just very useful from that respect because if you're just trying to do it on a table, you may burn holes in the table, you may get, you know, solder all over the table and it's... You really don't want to do that too much. I should probably get one of those because there's definitely solder on my table at home. And I think I got this at Harbor Freight, I want to say maybe 10, 15 bucks. It's not real expensive, but it's been very handy to have. I use it almost all the time when I'm doing things. And then we move on to like other tools. So one, one thing I use a lot is I have a pair of tweezers that I use to hold the wires, to hold LEDs. It's just nice to have something smaller that you can get their soldering iron on and not worry about burning your fingers off. Which, I mean, granted we're cosplayers, we're used to doing this, but it's a little bit nicer not to hurt yourself while you're doing it. Um, next thing, we have solder. This is something that you're gonna need a lot um, because when you're soldering, obviously you need solder. You need something to make that nice electrical connection. So, you know, this is just something cheap. Actually, this one's from Radio Shack. Uh, there's all kinds of it online. Uh, I don't want to really get into the technical know-how behind it, but me personally, I prefer stuff that has what's called a rosin core. The rosin just helps melt the solder. It makes it easier to work with compared to just solid solder where there is no rosin. It's harder to work with and harder to get, get it to melt and make a good connection. All so, right, awesome, good to know. Um, next, we have wire cutters and wire strippers. So obviously the wire cutters are to cut wires, you know, so that way you get a nice clean cut where you want it to be all the time. It has small uh, small uh, tips on it so it's easier to cut the wires. And then you have your wire strippers and that's just to strip the coating off the wire, you know, as you're, so that way you can make a nice connection. You can have strip off just a little bit or maybe a little bit more depending on what you're doing if you're connecting two wires together or you're connecting the wire to a small LED, you know, you can strip off just enough to get it right. And there's different settings on, on it as well for different wire sizes, so that way you don't, you know, snip off part of the insides of the wire and you only remove the coating on the outside. And that's kind of it, let's say more for the tool side, but then we have a bunch of other things like the wire. So I have some different wire types. Um, this is a lot of the wire that I use. You can find this on Adafruit, which is where I got these packages from. You can find larger spools um, on places like DigiKey, which is an electronics supplier. 
Uh, I just have some of each because I use it so much. Um, personally, me, I always like to get um, what they call silicone coated wiring. Um, the reason I like to do that is it's much more flexible. You know, it's, it's very flexible, it's easy to move, it's not going to break easily um, after time. If you have like a part or a joint that you're moving, like with my Tron armor, I had a piece here and a piece up here, and I had wire going between, well it was all this silicone wire because it's moving around all the time. If you get the other types of wire, which generally it's PFTE coating, it tends to crack after, you know, moving in a joint for a long time. So that's the reason I like to use the silicone covered wire. Cat is also a very important part. <laughs> and he is extremely interested in what we are going on with right now. <laughs> All right, so uh, you still have a couple more things up here. Can you tell us so, about those? This here is kind of strange. Okay, you can get this. I think I got this a long time ago. Actually, way back when I was working on Iron Man, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. And it's just, uh, it's from the sewing section. It's a... Uh, I call it like bridal veil material. It's just a very thin but fine uh, mesh material. And I like using this for things like on my eye or covering my eyes. So I may use like a piece of acrylic and I'll cut this out and put it over top of the acrylic. Awesome. And then I can light the acrylic up and the light reflects off of this mesh material outside and people can, and it makes your eye light up. Uh, the reason I like this is, for instance, like with my bleach mask, you can see the person's eye through that mask yet. So it gives it a real eerie kind of look because you can still see their retina out through the mask. And it allows people to kind of get almost like a creepier look out of it at times <laughs> if you're looking, if you want that effect. Uh, but that's why I have this and I've used this. I'll be using this for one of the other tutorials we're doing uh, to essentially get that same effect. And the last thing, which unfortunately the kitty is covering up, would be the hot glue gun. Uh, I'm sure every cosplayer really out there that builds their own props and materials has one of these. Uh, I, in particular, I think I got this at Michael's for like $30. I like this hot glue gun because it came with a bunch of different tips. So I can have the glue come out in different types of shapes. For instance, this has a nice fine uh, uh, tip where it comes out in a line. So if I'm trying to connect two pieces together, it makes a line that will cover both parts of it as opposed to just a round tip where you'll kind of get it just clumping up on top and it's a little harder to get a nice fine layer on top of the part. Uh, so that's that's what I use that for. And of course then it has the circular tips so if I'm connecting two pieces of foam at a corner I can go through and put a nice bead of uh, hot glue down the corner to help hold it together. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. So now you know all the stuff you need to put electronics in your cosplay. Be sure and subscribe to our channel because we're going to have more videos with Aaron where he shows us how to actually utilize all of these tools. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.